I don't prefer any one style. It, I, I like to play country music. I like to play progressive rock, folk music. I just played in Montenegro with uh, uh, Serbs, uh, Russians, uh, uh, Mongolian, uh, Montenegrin, uh, Ukraine, uh, Finland. America, many, many, many musicians. So I'm playing all there. I like it. It's it's very fresh to me. You know, uh, maybe they know it, but to me it's fresh. Um, the music I don't like to play is very little that I don't like to play. But when I was young, like every musician, I would play top 40. You know what I mean? When you're in a bar, like a hotel, and you play, don't go change. And oh fuck, I hate that. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, I hate playing those uh, okay. feelings. Nothing more than like schmaltzy. I call schmaltzy. Uh, that's the only music I don't like to play. It's uh, insincere to me. Well, the most important project for me is King Crimson. That's my number one, and King Crimson's working again. So that's uh, that's my top priority. And King Crimson this year will be active. We're gonna, we toured last year in America. This year, mostly in uh, in England, and then a little bit in uh, Europe. Only three shows in Paris, two shows in Holland. That's all Robert wants to do. And then I can tell you now, we're going to take a short break that in October, and Stickman will play in Europe for October, since we're already there. And then it was just announced, I can tell you, that King Crimson will go to Canada. So we'll go across Canada, Quebec, Montreal, Toronto, uh, Calgary, Vancouver, Victoria Falls. So we'll go across there. That's my number one priority. Already this year, I went once already to rehearse with Gavin and Bill Reefle, the three drummers. Um, so we rehearse without the band, the three drummers, to make our organization. And after this tour, when I come home from South America, that's where I go. It's another uh, week with Gavin and Bill. So then my other priority would be Stickmen. You know, we've been playing now for five years, Tony and I and we have Marcus in the band now. Um, so we're preparing another Stickman record. We're, we've been working uh, oh, already for a year on the compositions. Uh, Tony Levin went to Berlin to work with Marcus to do some writing, passing files, but we won't really do most of the recording till later this year. The record will come out next year. Um, I also have a new record it's not announced yet, but with Marcus and I, we do a duo we call Tuner. And Tuner has a new record. We spent about four years, five years making a record. One song, 35 minutes long, very epic. Um, More experimental. experimental. It's not experimental. No, well, it's based on algorithms and mathematics, and this dictates the formula. So it's it's a non-repeating song for thir 35 minutes. But the composition comes from a, a spreadsheet. We use mathematics to determine the numbers, and then we make the numbers tell us. The rhythm, not the rhythm, but the time signature, the tempos, two notes to supply the third note by the human. So there's an interpretation we do, but it's it's very hard record to explain. The record folds in half, but it does not repeat. And okay. the bar lines are very, very, very strange because it's all dictated by mathematics and then we try to work within those confines. It's like if, if you say, you can only paint with blue, like Picasso. Everything has to fit the formula. And this record is actually two records. We only have one done, 35 minutes. The other 35 minutes, we're still working on. When they come together, they go like this, like this, or like this. Okay. Okay. It's very mathematic. Marcus uh, is like genius. With It's quite often very light. Um, it's not always heavy. It uses a lot of different instrumentations. Um, violins and horns and banjos and 
hand drums and stick drums and brush drums and electronic music. Electronic some, but it's not like electronica. No, it's more organic. We wanted it to be yeah. organic. Um, well, that's something I've been working on a long time. More recently, about a year ago, not even a year ago, I met a guy in Slovakia, David Kohler. He plays guitar, mm -hmm. does movie, and a trumpet player from Italy, Paolo Ranieri. And the three of us, we toured in last November in Slovakia. We did uh, six shows and we did a recording session. And now we've finished that recording session. Um, I can show you, uh, the, the record is done. It's just getting done right now. It'll come out in about two weeks on the CD. Then the vinyl takes a long time. Um, and my friend uh, Adam Jones from the band Tool, he helped, uh, he did some artwork that he offered us to use. Uh, have you seen this? I put it online maybe a little while ago. Uh, pretty fucking great, huh? <laughs> That's the front cover. And Adam from Tool did that. <coughs> and that is actually his demo. This we call Komora. I can send you a press release. Uh, and then there's more, but nobody knows this one yet. Nobody knows. I haven't shown anybody, but also Adam does this. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty fucking great. Uh, so that is called Komora. Uh, K-O, like Kohler. M-A, like Mastelato. Yeah. R-A, like Rainieri, the trumpet player. Ah, so it's, um, it's, it's very heavy, but it's very light. I don't know. It's a bit more jazz. Uh, it's a lot of electronica. Um, Progressive. It's very progressive, but not like Yes. It's not like progressive rock, like Yes and Genesis. No, it's not like that at all. I don't really do anything much like that. There's another project that's coming out right now that's very good. It's called Ork, O-R-K. Ork is, uh, is an Italian, two Italians. The bass player is Colin from Porcupine Tree. And we call that Ork. Uh, they just sent the cover. If I can find it, the cover just came in the email. That is Ork. O R K. Um, let's think. There's other projects. Oh, we just played in Japan, Stickman with David Cross, the violin player from Kingdom. Okay. Yeah, so we did four shows in Japan, we've recorded those, that's already mixed, it'll come out in about, I think, two weeks, it's very, very close. Um, yeah, it's very good. I've only just heard a little, you know, I did the playing and listen and, yeah, busy. I want to tell you something, do you notice this record, do you ever listen to Ginger Baker? You know Ginger Baker? Do you, do you ever have a Ginger Baker's Air Force, that record, Ginger Baker's Air Force? After Cream, after Blind Faith. He had a band, Ginger Baker's Air Force. Three drummers, Phil Seaman, Ginger Baker, Remy Kaban. And um, he makes a record that's left-handed. My CD is left-handed. Uh -huh. That's the front. This is my tribute to Ginger Baker, left-handed. Uh, okay. Because I saw you trying to open, you were struggling. It's a backwards. Um, I don't, I don't listen to that many. I, in my own world, um, you know, I don't know how to pronounce names very well. There's a great Hungarian drummer, Hungarian um, drummer. Gorgil, Gorgio? He's fucking great. I have to look him up on the Wi-Fi, on the uh, on the internet. I don't know, man. I, I'm just in my own little world. I'm not listening. I get too much music to work on. So other young drummers, uh, Merlin Etoile, uh, Etoile. Uh, Jason McKenzie, these are guys you don't know. Um, yeah. Young guys, Tobias. Tobias is fucking great. Um, yeah, there's just lots and lots of, you know, I turn on YouTube, yeah. it's like, they're great, great drummers all over, yeah. very young. Uh, yeah. With practice and organization. <laughs> yeah, we organize. It's like discipline? Um, yeah, Cube well, it. well, you mean discipline the song? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, probably yes. Um, like even right now, I'm trying to download a file from Gavin. Um, let me check that out. Yeah. So we do a lot of this. You know, you send it, we transfer, uh, we Dropbox, transfer, yeah. and um, 
these are some more live tapes, but I have about six here to go through that he sent yesterday. Uh, we have new drum duets and uh, some new songs. So um, we start, the drummers get together alone, just the drummers. Just drums. Yeah, and then, uh, well, we do Skype and email and all that first, and we make a plan. And then we get together and we rehearse just the three of us, and we make uh, a little bit of a tape that we can play to. So maybe a little bit of guitar or something that we can, so we can listen. Okay. We can play and we can listen. And we do that at Gavin's studio the last two times, three times. Um, kind of low volume, not high intensity. And um, uh, that helps us get organized. And then uh, we rehearse again without the band, but on bigger drum sets, on a okay. bigger bigger stage. With more volume, I think. Yeah, more volume, but with the electronics. Okay. Like that's what we'll do next time. Is we'll actually have some amplification. Uh, when we just rehearsed, there was no point to have. Okay. You know, and Bill Reeflin plays keyboards. Bill plays keyboards and other things. But for those rehearsals, we don't do that. Okay. <coughs> and then uh, it just we listen. We listen and we go, hey, you need to take that beat away because we don't want to play at the same time on top of each other. Okay. Uh, one of the worst things you can do with multiple drummers is play the bass drums because they're always yeah so you don't want those flams down there so you have to dictate okay you get to play the bass drum at okay. that moment and okay. this other place you get to play the bass drum all right and so sometimes it's weird because you're going to go and you can't do the bass drum yeah. at the end it's his <laughs> bass drum you know what i mean so it's just by intuition or by uh by by playing drums your whole life you get in these habits okay there's always a, a foot under your yeah. symbol, but now no foot. <laughs> or maybe my is my foot has to come after the crash. Uh, you know, so if it's if it's one, two, three, four, uh, <clears throat> those are my beats. Uh, I don't get to play. Beat, like yeah, the off beats, beats or whatever. It, we change all the time, so uh, we don't have one strict formula. Okay. We just we do it and we listen and uh, and we decide. Yeah, we make a choice. And that's very difficult, actually. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, yeah, acoustic, you know, acoustic drums are great. Mm -hmm. You know, when you hit it, it's going to be quiet or loud by yeah. your energy. You with use the, a DW, right? DW drums, yeah. Yeah. Which one with the with the X? Uh, um, well, I I play so many different drums, dude. Yeah. Um, you know, these aren't my drums tonight. And anytime I play in Chile. I don't have my drums. Yeah. With Mr. Mr. we brought our equipment, but I probably play on about uh, at least 50 yeah. different drum kits every year. Okay. Because in Montenegro, those weren't my drums, yeah. you know. They didn't even have a hi-hat clutch. You know the part that makes the hi-hat yeah. go up? I couldn't do that. I just had a hi-hat stand and I set the cymbal there. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> they, they couldn't find a clutch. Uh, some days you have two bass drums, some days you have one pedal. You know, sometimes what fucks me up is I like to have a 16 and an 18. Sometimes you get a 14, and it's so small I like ah, I miss the drum. Uh, so I lately, when I get the small drums, I put the 16 in front and then the 14 behind it. Um, wait, but you asked me about the dynamics because yeah. the hard thing is that the electronic drums. It's hard to get the balance right. Okay. Okay, and if you're playing with a loop or a sequence or something on stage, I need to hear it pretty loud to play with it. Right. But that doesn't mean in the house that you as a listener, it should be in the track. Right. So sometimes that's hard for the mixer in the house to understand. I only have it loud up here so I can hear it. And there it needs to be blended, okay. you know. Right. Um, and then there's... But you always uh, trouble with your uh, with your sound no. guy? No, no, not always at all. We do like a Russian Julian. We, we had a, I had a Russian guy three weeks ago. He didn't speak any English, and I yeah. can't even. Oh. He had he had all the microphones in the monitor. There were seven or eight singers on stage, so he had about 25 microphones in my monitors. I only need one, the, the yeah. bass drum, and maybe the little bit of the singer. That's all I want in my monitor. I don't want the whole thing. I don't want mics that aren't even being used. No. You know, like wind in my yeah. monitor and every tom tom boom boom like I don't need this stuff. Overheads. He had the overheads in the monitors. It's like <laughs> you this have it is, right there. Yeah, Come but on. He, it was crazy, but we can't speak to him to understand. He doesn't it was
is crazy. Um, but even when you play the electronic drums, if the balance, if the level is not right, you have to make adjustments. So you see a lot when I play, I have a mixer usually here. So while I'm playing, I am usually have to adjust the... But you move your own sound. You, you're not messing with the, with the levels. The other, not yeah. for the guitar or the singer, no, no. No, not in this band, no. Just... It's a hard thing. Yeah, it's... it's it shouldn't be hard. Sometimes it's like you need to say stop. Stop uh, one minute, I get everything right, now we start again. <laughs> That's it. And if you play the same songs every night, in the same order, in the same room, with the same equipment, then you can probably get that organized. Right. You know, but in most of the music I play, we improvise, we play on different equipment, we play different. a little room one day, a big room another room. One day it's concrete, different. one yeah. day it's wood. wood. It always yeah. sounds different, so uh, it always has to be adjusted in the moment. I, I don't know because, I don't know. It's a, it's a strange genre, mm -hmm. progressive rock. Yeah. Because, to me, when progressive rock, when they say this is progressive rock in 1970 or something, it meant progressive. It right. meant progress. Yeah. Okay? Now it doesn't mean that anymore. Progressive rock means nostalgia. Yeah. It means we sound like 1970, 1975, Pink Floyd, Yes, Genesis. Those were great bands. But I'm not interested in that. I, I don't want to... Move on. Come no, on. no, no. To me, progressive music. I like to play progressive music. I don't want to. Be stuck I, I in the like, past. I like prog rock, but as a genre, that doesn't interest me really. I would be more interested in something that is truly progressive. Okay. Dance music, electronic music, okay. world music. Those hybrids are much more progressive. To That's me. right. That's what I'm. Fusions. In. Yeah, but I, I don't want to try to play in a band that sounds like yes. Like yes. Yeah, I, I doesn't interest me. Either. Not very many. You guys. I've seen you guys three times. <laughs> what like do you think about Crusalida? You're great. Yeah? You're great. And I did get your last record when we played in uh, Baja Prague. Uh, Mexico. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I got your record and I left. Uh, when we left that day, we went to San Diego, I guess. Everybody flew home from San Diego, but I didn't. I rented a car and I drove up to Los Angeles to see my mom. My mom's in a had a stroke. She's in a hospital. Oh. So I listened to your record maybe three or four times oh. because it's about a three. I took the coast. I drove up on the beach. So it wasn't the fastest way on the 405 that I went up. And I listened to your record. It's the only record I listened to. I had one <laughs> CD. I put it over and over and over again. So yeah. So I heard that record a lot. But that was three years ago. Do you remember a particular song you catch your attention? The first song. The first song the first was definitely the best. The one's in six eight. I don't remember uh, what it is, uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I can't remember now. too many other songs. But... I doubt it. Doubt it? Yeah. That decision isn't for me. Yeah. But we rehearsed over the year for seven weeks. Okay. So we had many, many more rehearsals than gigs. And the drummers got together besides that. So we put in, I don't know what, four times as much rehearsal. Okay. Um, stick men, we're lucky if we can rehearse one day. Ever. But, but that's the kind of the magic of the band, probably. How, yeah, how, yeah, things how, come together. How do you blend together, like in, in this situation, like improvisational situation? Right? Yeah, when Marcus joined the band, we had two rehearsals in. Uh, Buenos Aires, so uh, very, very different with Crimson. Yeah, I'd like to bring uh, Komura, the thing I just talked about. I'd like to bring Orc, this other thing. Um, but, you know, the yeah, this is difficult. We don't know if we could tour with this because it's Tobias and I, and, you know, there's some other musicians on there, uh, Tony and different people. So that's, that's not really made to tour. If we did something like this, it would be more like a, a drum festival. And maybe we pre-record some of those tracks and Tobias and I would play with the pre-recorded tracks. Maybe um, Underscore. Yeah. And, and the spur, probably. <laughs> well, the problem is always <laughs> the scheduling and the time. You know, if, if it's only one gig far away, it never works. 
everything has to the logistics, you know, the yeah. days have to match that you can go from this play to the other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we see this all the time. People want to know right now, why didn't we play in Panama City? We played last time, or why didn't we play in Venezuela? Or uh, because the promoter didn't offer a date that would fit the schedule. Well, maybe the venue or the equipment. Or maybe, yeah, there's other factors. It's no. not like he's being mean. It's like no, you know, no, no. So there's other situations. Base, base. Maybe he has another band that week. I don't know all the reasons. So uh, that happens a lot. <laughs> from, from your yeah. experience. Yeah. Uh, well, you mean for musicians, right? Yes, yeah. for musicians. Um, just to just to play because you really like to play, you know, to create music. Um, a lot of times the motivation is uh, to be on MTV or to be on the yeah. radio or to make a lot of money or to get laid or all these other things. Um, that's all good, but it's there's no security. To be a musician, there's no insurance. There's, you know, as you get older, um, sometimes you think and you realize, well, if I went to school, <laughs> I could make uh, my family have, you know, income and insurance. My wife doesn't have to work. You know, a lot of times, musician, uh, my income goes up and down. You know, I made some good money with Mr. Mister, but a year or two later, I was back to making no money. You know, so I'm trying to say, don't be motivated by the mo money. Yeah. That's my that's my best advice. Because the money will go away. Hi, I'm Pat Maslata from King Crimson. I'm just saying hi to the people of Andy's Rock. Yes, I'm Is that okay? I'm this Prague. Prague, okay. I told you. <laughs> hi, this is Pat Maslata from King Crimson and I'm wishing you guys well at Andy's Prague.